Please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. Hey, welcome back or welcome everyone. Another fun and exciting video here today at Blue Glow Electronics. Um, this may be a video, maybe a video series. I'm not exactly sure yet what it's going to turn into. We'll find out as we get into it. But the topic of the day is the E-Tracer vacuum tube curve tracer slash and or tube tester. So the story goes back a few years. I've been following along this uh, kind of uh, blog or forum group um, about a, a vacuum tube tester that was computerized called the Micro Tracer. And um, it, it, was a, it was a wonderful unit in development. I kind of watched it evolve along the, uh, the iterations that it went through. Finally, it's up to a 3 plus version right now. And, um, but it has some shortcomings, okay? And the shortcoming was that it would only put out about 400 volts. And there was a lot of talk on the forums about a version four of the micro tracer that would go up to a much higher voltage, like seven or 800 volts. But ultimately the, uh, the kind of, uh, the creator of the micro tracer came back and said, hey, he was abandoning the uh, 4.0 path. Um, for now, and maybe he'd come back around to it later down the road and kind of revisit some of the design assumptions. Well, about that time, this guy named Chris from Taiwan kind of said, hmm, well, maybe I'll take a different path with it. And so he kind of, uh, I guess, reverse engineered to some degree um, or just kind of copied the concept of the micro tracer and um, started headed down his own path with this uh, device called the E-Tracer. And I think he reached back out to the guy that made the Micro Tracer and actually offered to partner up with him to kind of take the Micro Tracer to the next level. And, uh, and I guess there was no interest in that, that partnership or whatever. So at any rate, Chris kind of went out on his own and, and went the full length here. He created the, uh, the circuit boards created a, a, a chassis and enclosure, a power supply, and he's developed his own software for this. And it's developed a good little bit of a following. Um, and so, and he's been uh, sporting it at some trade shows overseas. And um, so I think it's just a really neat um, device. And, um, and I think it will be worth us building one of these. So I mentioned this summer that I planned to put one of these together. And so I ordered one in September. And this nice little yellow box from DHL, uh, which if you'll notice I have not even cut open yet, showed up on September 17th and it's been sitting on my shelf ever since. Reason being I wanted to get the single ended KT88 amplifier uh, series out of the way first. But now that that's done, we're going to dive heavy into this unit. Um, I will tell you, Chris has a website with lots of info on it, and I'll put a link to it below. He also has a really good following out on a Facebook group, and I'll uh, I'll put a link to that below. The beauty of that Facebook group is you can just post questions, and either other people or Chris himself will respond uh, to these things. So, and the other thing I'm excited about with this, a lot there's a, there are some computerized tube testers out there, okay? The problem is, much like if you watch my video on why I sold my Appletrex tube tester, um, the software development's kind of gone stale. The, the, uh, the Appletrex, that software hasn't been updated probably since the, <laughs> the mid-90s or so. I mean, it's it's some, some VB plus kind of stuff. Uh, whereas Chris seems to be cranking out new software every couple weeks for this thing um, and keeps updating it. So I'm pretty excited about all that. All right, let's get out the razor, cut into this thing, and get into the video. All right, I sped up the opening of this box not to bore you too much, but um, here you'll get to see what's inside of it. Okay, we uh, sped this along and we will show you what it all looks like once we get it outside of the box here. All right, just about everything unboxed at this point. Um, got the main power supply board, got some wire here. Looks like a uh, USB connection here that will be used to uh, connect this to your PC. Looks like all the banana plug jacks here. And if you'll remember in one of my videos, let me grab this. One of my followers had actually mentioned that he built one of these after seeing my post about it this summer. And he, he happened to be a machinist, and he actually made a tool 
um, to tighten these little lugs uh, on these banana jacks. He said they were a real pain to tighten without one. So he made one and he actually shipped me one. I have since seen where Chris is actually now providing a tool like this um, in with every one of these kits. All right, we've got the, looks like the power supply board here, a nice dual-sided board, and boy, that thing is uh, complex. Um, looks like all of our banana jumpers that we'll use to kind of uh, configure the unit along the way. We'll get into that more later. Looks like it's got all the tube sockets here in a bag. And as I mentioned, the uh, two end bells, uh, end covers here, as well as the uh, the chassis itself. That's it. There are no instructions in the box, so I'm going to have to jump over to Chris's website and find those. Okay, we're on Chris's website now, and if you click on Downloads, it looks like, and scroll down a little bit, you'll see Official eTracer Documents and Software here. If we click on it, looks like there's a user manual for the eTracer. There's a user guide for the chassis itself. There's tube configuration files for it. There's the PC control software that you'll need. There's some data samples. Um, looks like there's a user manual. Looks like it's getting into older versions here. And then looks like there may be some uh, traditional Chinese versions <laughs> as well. So anyway, we're going to download the user manual here for this unit. Um, and you do have to... Uh, Create a, I have, as you noticed, I've, uh, I've created a forum login, which I've done on his website uh, previously. And looks like I'm going to download this software now. And look here, a nice, uh, well laid out manual that warns you lethal high voltages. Uh, but it starts to tell you a, a little bit about this unit and, and kind of does a block diagram, tells you how to connect all this together, uh, what each of the pins do. Uh, talks about how it uh, handles uh, heating up your tubes. Um, talks about how the uh, the operation principle of high voltage one and high voltage two does a really good job of describing how this unit kind of works. Um, shows you where you connect things up at. Um, yeah, looks like we got a little bit of soldering to do, maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is a kit. Did I mention that? Oh wow. Um, and we'll keep scrolling down through here. Then it shows you how you got to wire up the uh, chassis, which I imagine there's more documentation on that in the chassis. Um, I'm just showing you a little bit of what's here in the instructions. He's gone to some great depths here, I think, to, uh, to help you understand what you're building, not just how to put it together, but how it works. That is a pet peeve of mine. Um, I'm not knocking bottle here because I built a lot of their kits, but it's a great example of um, you build a bottle head kit. It tells you exactly how to install everything where it should be installed. It does absolutely nothing to tell you how this amplifier actually works. And so I'm, I'm very proud of Chris that he not only tells you how to build something here, but he also tells you, um, you know, how to make it work or, you know, how it how it works actually, um, not just the how to build. And Dynaco was the same way. Back in the day, you built a Dynaco. Um, you learned a lot about how to build something. You didn't necessarily learn a lot about, um, you know, how the unit functions. All right, here's the chassis guide. And it starts out telling you there's a bunch of uh, ferrite beads and Molex crimps. And boy, we're going to have some fun here. So. I'm just going to dive into this and start putting it together and building it, and um, you guys can kind of follow along as I go. I'm probably not going to show you every step because it would turn into a, a really long video, but um, we'll show you the highlights along the way enough to uh, to uh, help you help you build one of these. Okay, one thing it mentions here um, as I was scrolling through the chassis, it says there are some items not included in the kit and should be provided by the user. The screws and nuts for mounting the tube sockets. That's something you could pick up at your local hardware store. Um, one 5 millimeter by 20 millimeter slow blow fuse for the AC mains. Um, and, and it says current rating 2 amp for 110 volts. And I see why he didn't include this. It depends on where you're at in the world as to whether you need a 2 amp or a 1 amp fuse. But that'll be probably something that I may need to order. I'm not sure if I've got a many 5 millimeters. I don't do a lot of the IC little fuse um, connectors. One USB type cable to connect to your PC. The one I showed you earlier on the bench there is one that goes inside this unit 
and one IAC power cord. And by the way, um, don't spend a lot of money on those. Go to any local Goodwill, look in their little cable section, you will find one for a dollar. Okay, I'll spend a little more time reading through the instructions here, and it kind of gives you an overview first. And then what it does is it basically takes you down here to where it says start assembling this. And what he's basically saying is each piece has its, uh, you know, kind of a distinct look to it. Um, it'll tell you things like the left panel has no opening, the right panel has ventilation side on the side here, the back, you know, certainly looks like this, and then it tells you there are screws to put all this together. So it doesn't actually walk you like step one, connect the front panel to the left panel, um, to the back panel or whatnot. It basically says here's what this thing looks like, and you can uh, you can kind of put it together yourself just by following the picture. So we're going to go over and do that. Okay, one thing I would recommend when you go to open this is just pull up on it a little bit and cut some of the plastic and then start kind of tearing it along the way. You got to be careful kind of cutting through uh, um, plastic. You'll, you'll end up scratching your plate, but we're just opening up the, the chassis at this point. Okay, we've got all the chassis components out of the pack now. You've got your top plate. And by the way, Chris sells spare top plates that if you wanted to make your own sockets, like maybe an 845 or 211 uh, socket or whatnot, he sells, sells spare plates. Um, this will be the front of the unit. This will be the back of the unit. Uh, this one that has the, uh, you know, the built-in little uh, standoffs and whatnot, that'll be the bottom. Then you've got your panel here that goes on the front where all your um, banana jacks will go. If you remember, it said the left side has no panels, uh, no openings on it, and the right side here does. And that's because I think we end up mounting the power supply off of that, I'm guessing. But uh, we're going to assemble these. Somewhere in here, in the, one of these bags, and I think it's this one, there's a bunch of countersunk screws with the little beveled heads on them. This is just a, a pack here that has all sorts, and I'm going to go get a bowl or something to put all these in. Hold on one second. All right, as you can see, i got a little bowl here. I find these little things, you can buy these at any grocery store in a little pack, three for two or three dollars, uh, disposable little... But you can see here the countersunk sunk screws. They've got the bevel head on them. Um, we're going to use a lot of these in assembling this chassis. So I'm just going to kind of pull these out and separate them and start putting this together. And for screws like these, and, I, and you can buy these online, they're the little bitty magnetic uh, trays. I keep a whole stack of them up here on my shelf. And uh, I'm going to end up putting all these little uh, screws I'm about to use into one of these. Okay, there are three different types of screws. These uh, have a little built-in washers on them, and uh, and then there's four of these. And interestingly, I'm not sure what these are made out of. Maybe aluminum, but they're not magnetic. Um, I'll tell you a funny story I saw on a Facebook post the other day. A guy had his oscilloscope, and he was wondering why his trace was off. And uh, apparently, he was storing. Uh, this little unit, uh, his little uh, magnetic units on the side of his oscilloscope, and uh, a magnet will mess with your uh, with your trace on your uh, CRT there. <laughs> so it's just a funny post. Anyways, we got these laid out. We're going to start assembling. All right, I went back and studied the pictures for a minute, and it's really easy to figure out. And it'll tell you in there, like like you can see in the pit some of the pictures that this goes at the back of the unit, and will ultimately. Uh, mount on the side back here with the uh, with the fan outlets and whatnot on the back. And then if you read the instructions, it'll tell you that the left hand side here has no openings on it. So then I just flipped it over, and I'm just starting to put the uh, the counter sunk screws in. What I what I typically do with stuff like this is I like to uh, kind of get them started by hand, and then once you get them started by hand, come along with a uh, you know, a screwdriver or whatnot. I, I use um, a little electric unit here. Uh, I got so I got a Ryobi, a skill, a couple different ones that, I, that are laying around the house, but um, they're just handy for this kind of stuff. So you kind of get the idea here. It's uh, kind of line things up, get get them all started. Um, not going to tighten it too tight. Um, there we go. And the left side is on. We'll keep rolling along. One thing to note on these sides, the, uh, the part that has the overlapping lip on it here, 
um, that does go upwards and the, uh, the part that doesn't have that goes down on the bottom. Alright, we've got the two sides on. It took about 30 seconds to do that. I'm just going to flip it up and I noticed the, the side with the little uh, tab on it right here. This goes on the back and you can see the back has a hole right there perfectly for that. So you just lay it on and we're going to put these screws in. I do find it maybe a little easier to just put it on the end of a magnetic screwdriver and then kind of start working it a little bit that way uh, than to try to insert these by, uh, by hand here. You can see not much to it. I will tell you, this is just a side tip, if your significant other or spouse ever asks you what to get you for a Christmas present, this little uh, set here, why, uh, um, screwdriver set for my bench top, it comes with a little metal stand and then all these drop in uh, little tools. Uh, I think they're, I can't remember, 140 bucks, something like that. Uh, some of the best money ever spent. That's an amazing little unit. and. Uh, Gives you every size uh, screwdriver and nut driver and uh, hex head, anything you could ever imagine. All right, we've got the back on. Now we'll flip it over and we can uh, just simply four more screws and you've got the front plate mounted. All right, we've got the chassis assembled. One thing I'm noticing is that I've got to mount this power supply here to this uh, side with the ventilation. Might have been easier to do that before I assembled it, but uh, I don't think it'll be any challenge to get in there and. Uh, and mount it down at this point. One thing you won't do at this point, you will not put the uh, two top plates on. That's where the majority of our assembly will take place and that'll that'll be next. Let's get the boards mounted inside of this now. Okay, this would have probably been a little easier to do if I would have done it before I mounted it. If you'll notice the little white uh, connector right here, it goes on this side with the um, with the ventilation holes here, or at least in Chris's pictures it does. And so you just kind of got to lay this thing up on here like this and then uh, get your screwdriver. And uh, since I use a magnetic tip screwdriver here, I can put that on here. And we'll just uh, tighten these into place and get all four of them mounted. By the way, when, uh, when mounting things with PC boards, I always hand tighten those. I never use power tools on anything with a, uh, with a PC board. Easy to crack the corners. Okay, up next we're going to mount the, um, the actual motherboard in it and it looks like the power supply on this side. Um, this unit just drops down in and it has some standoffs that it mounts against and there's actually six standoffs. One, two, three, four, five, six and there again same little story. Um, we're going to hand tighten those. And uh, anytime you're putting a board together like this, it's always good to put the screws in but not tighten them down until you get all the screws in. Um, otherwise, if you put one side in and tighten it down too tight, then you may not, you know, may not be aligned on the other side where you're trying to uh, trying to put these in. But you get the idea. Okay, up next it has four screws, um, the ones that were not magnetic. And it says it's four plastic standoffs. I call them uh, rubber feet. <laughs> but um, yeah, you'll have, there's four feet that mount to the bottom of this unit and uh, the screws just hold them on. All right, we've got the feet on and uh, starting to look good. One thing to note, this unit does not come with a fan and it does not require one. However, if you read in the instructions, it says you may want one for uh, certain testing scenarios. And so um, I bought one, it's an eight millimeter fan. So we're gonna end up mounting it into the chassis here as well. And it will tell you that the air should be moving um, from in the cha in the chassis outward. Um, so we're going to end up mounting our fan. But if you didn't if you didn't get an eight millimeter fan, uh, it doesn't come with one, and it's not, absolutely not required. You can um, you can skip this step. But um, I'm going to mount mine. Okay, if you get a fan, and by the way, I got a uh, I got it off of Amazon, a Coolmaster standard fan, 80 ST2 had a real uh, high rating of hours and a really quiet fan. And the way this works is um, if you look at a fan, it will always have an open side and a side with, side with kind of the, uh, the uh, structure to hold the fan. Uh, airflow will always come out this direction towards this. So this will mount on the 
the outer part here and it came with four screws in the little pack and if I'm not mistaken this is just going to plug in here into the motherboard we'll figure that out as we get further into it okay as you can see we put the four screws in here on the back and the fan is now mounted into the unit there again optional okay up next we're going to mount this little cord that um, um, will be the USB connector and it kind of goes from the chassis to the motherboard and if you'll notice it has the screws that you'll use um, mounted onto the cord so you'll need to take those off um, so that you can then mount it and put these back on and if I'm not mistaken here this will be as simple as um, it's got a little twist tie on here maybe we'll want to leave that I'm not sure yet I'll probably end up using a zip tie instead but um, this will mount, oh, that's not good to have that laying in there. This will mount right here onto the back. And as you can see, that will give you a nice little, um, so we will end up putting the screws through one at a time, putting the nuts on the back, and just kind of tighten them up right here. All right, got that mounted on. And as you can see, there's a nice little plug-in socket right down here that this will need to plug into. And hmm, I'm finding that hard to put in. What I'm gonna end up having to do is take these four screws out right here to plug that in. It will make it uh, much easier if you just take the top plate off now and plug that in and put it back together. And as you can see here with the front cover off now, it's really easy to just plug that in. That's, you know, that's the one thing I would say about the instructions if I was going to you know, give Chris any feedback to maybe improve it, is his steps aren't laid out like do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. It's kind of like here's all the stuff and here's how it should look and kind of put it together. And, uh, and then last but not least, this little IC connector here with the power switch it's just going to push down in. Let me go make sure I've got this the right way according to his pictures. We do. We've got the uh, switch here on the outer part. So that snaps over like that. And keep in mind, we if, if we need to when wiring up, um, you know, between here and the board or whatnot, we can always take this panel back off. But um, yeah, it's coming together quite nicely. Okay, up next, um, we've got a wire up. If you'll notice here in the back of this, you've got a wire from the power um, supply here over to the IC connector fuse and switch and this is a, an area that I think um, the instructions could be enhanced a little bit all it really tells you here is it's a power module the AC mains shall be connected to input CN1 and that's really all it tells you and it doesn't show you how to wire up um, well, I would say maybe the uh, the uh, neutral the line uh, earth doesn't look like in this scenario they're even connecting earth to ground here and how to wire the switch in um, you know I can certainly figure that out but I thought uh, that might be an area we could enhance the uh, hence the documentation here and there probably be a US version and a European version maybe but um, right, we're gonna go back over the bench and uh, see if we can get this wired up Okay, next up what I did here was um, just cut me a piece of uh, power cord off of uh, just a two-wire um, power cord and I uh, cut it about a foot long. And let me zoom in here and show you what I did. You can see I, um, I used one piece of wire from the top side of the switch here, brought it around and connected it here on this lug, and then I brought... Um, one side of the zip tie to the bottom of the or zip cord to the bottom of this strip and then the other one coming out here because this one's it's kind of hard to see but this uh, this side of the uh, plug is actually internally connected to the fuse and comes out through that side so basically what you've done is run one side through the fuse the other side through the switch here and then I'm gonna have to connect the other end up to uh, the Molex connector and then in all the examples I've seen, no one has connected this, uh, the ground to the chassis, but you know, we may do that uh, here at some point. Okay, on page 10 of the chassis diagram, it'll show you the, the power supply here on one side, and it'll say that the bottom lug should go to the AC line. Uh, the other one should go to AC neutral here, so one and three. And then if you scroll up, um, you'll notice this, this is actually made for a three-prong connector. There's just not a middle prong here. 
If you scroll back up, it'll talk about the um, the connectors, this uh, JST VHR series. They actually show here in the picture a two prong, but it's really a three prong that ships in the kit, and you're going to use two of these uh, little uh, inserts um, off of this strip that has five on it. And these are the larger ones. Um, the other ones, you'll see, there's a lot more of them, and they're much much smaller. So find the Find the white connector here that has a little uh, a latch tab on it um, that has three plugs in it, and that's the one we'll use. Okay, this is the little five lug um, strip here, and this is the little three prong connector with the uh, latch tab on the other side. And what you're going to end up doing is cutting two of these off just with a pair of snips. But if you'll notice here, there's a couple different uh, little tabs here. The outer ones are designed to connect around the uh, the actual uh, wire sheathing uh, insulation and then in the inner part here is what's designed to be crimped um, around the actual wire itself and then I'm actually going to solder it even beyond that so what I've done is I've uh, cut my wires off here and uh, got them pretty much even on both sides so that I've um, you can see here ready to go at this point I found using a little set of uh, little devices that kind of creates a hand-free scenario for you helpful when you go to solder things like this. And as you can see here we got both of these soldered on. Now at this point we just need to figure out which one goes to neutral and which one goes to the line and then we can plug it into the socket appropriately and plug it into the power supply. Okay, then all we did was trace the line side through the fuse, down through the line, and plugged it in here on the bottom one <coughs> with this facing to the right. And then it's just a matter of uh, sliding these things in, and they will, they will snap right in and make a clicking sound, and you are good to go at that point. Okay, we've got it plugged on and uh, locked down now, and um, you can see both ends of it here. Oh, if I can get it on the camera. There you go. And there you go. I'll tell you, I save a bin here full of just wire ends. These are ends I cut off of like um, when I'm wiring up a transformer or something. And these things are perfect to save for um, for little connections like this. It was easy to find a uh, black wire and a red wire for the positive and the negative here. And we're just going to connect that up to the Molex connector. Okay, as you can see here, this uh, I've got them wired up. Uh, the positive on the top and the um, black on the bottom here, or the negative, that'll end up snapping down into here just like this. And then the other two ends of the wires are going to go right here. So I'm just kind of putting it in place to measure how long I wanted to make my wires for this for this next jumper. I think I'm going to cut them off about right along in here because it doesn't need to go very far to get down to this uh, jumper right here. Okay, on uh, this connector here, one side's labeled plus 29 volts, the other side's labeled ground. It's easy to then figure out which side of this plugs in. Um, and then from there, it's easy to figure out which side needs to go. Um, and the black goes over here to ground, and we will plug this in and snap it. All right, and you can see this. I'll tell you, um, I kind of wish... You know, I don't know how much of a kit Chris intended this to be, but uh, soldering these little things on, making these little jumpers, is uh, it's uh, a little bit time-consuming. Um, some of these things could be pre-made and uh, and sold with the kit, I would imagine. Um, but maybe this is the the uh, DIY part of it he was after. Um, so now we've got power connected. We've got the motherboard connection down to this. Uh, there is a little trim pot right here on the um, on this, and it will tell you in the instructions that you'll want to adjust that at some point for 29 volts exactly if it's not there. Um, so you would just basically read across both of these. And the last part we're going to wire up in part one here is this front part of the panel. Um, I'm going to save wiring up the tube socket for video two. And then video three, I think I'll actually show the, uh, the software and it actually functioning. So at this point, we've actually got a wire up and it tells you in the instruction manual, it may be best to go ahead and mount the back panel on and put your screws on it and actually take the front panel off. It'll make connecting up um, this front part easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, the reason it has you do that is you're going to be wiring 
up on this final connector right here that will uh, ultimately end up going onto here and locking down which will feed up and feed into all of these. So you'll end up with uh, a set here that goes down to this that feeds the, uh, the high voltage ground, um, basically the connections that you'll use the jumper wires to then go from there to the tube socket board. And you're also going to wire up another header pin here uh, that will go down on the board that will illuminate the LEDs to let you know that uh, these are active. Okay, it'll show you here what a fully wired top plate looks like. It looks like you're jumpering. you got to mount all of these sockets in, and you're jumpering from one socket to the other, and then you're coming down here to this kind of uh, plug, and then it kind of shows you how it's connected up here. But you'll also have to go, and you've got to wire this end on as well. Um, you'll have to now um, go back to the other part of the manual. I'll show you that to see how to wire these up, actually. Okay, we're going to start with um, the actual connections to the uh, to the banana jacks. And if you'll notice here, they've got a diagram here on page 5 in the uh, PC board manual. And it actually shows you kind of pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and what it needs to wire to. So we're going to go over and do that now. Okay, up next we're just going to put all these in a little bowl here. And um, some of these have the uh, little not screwed up on them already so we'll have to undo some of those but we're just basically going to put these in place where they go and there's lots of pictures in the uh, diagram that show you the right color and where so we're just going to get these uh, mounted in here okay as you can see i'm just putting them on the nuts on here by hand and this is where this little handy tool that the uh, individual sent me very kind of nice individual uh, and like i say i think chris is now including something like this into all of his kits now and you just uh Tighten these kind of up one by one, and they uh, they snug right up. There we go, and they'll end up looking like that. Okay, one thing to note: um, I noticed in the picture that all these little tabs were kind of turned nice and facing like this, so that you could run the wires through them. But I noticed once I tightened these down, mine weren't all aligned. Well, it's it's as simple as uh, grabbing them and turning them once you have them installed and fully mounted. So, so when you're mounting, don't worry about the orientation of the tabs here. Okay, as you can see, they're all mounted now, and I've got all the tabs turned the same way. Simple enough. Uh, it, it was a little bit time consuming, about 10 minutes or so to put this on. I would just say take your time on all this stuff. Uh, the faster you try to go, the more likely you are to uh, mess up your threads or, or something else. Okay, what I've done now is printed out a picture of this, so I just have it laying here, and it makes it really easy as I start to uh, wire this up to know where it goes. Um, and you got to realize we got to go from about this height here down to here. So the wires don't need to be that but that long, but I'm going to give it a little bit of extra length so you can reach over in and plug or unplug this uh, this connection as you would as you would kind of reach down in the chassis and plug or unplug that. So um, so I think we'll end up going with something about this long. Okay, I may do this a little different than most, but what I'm going to actually do, and I'm using a thermal wire stripper. If you don't have one, you can use a regular wire stripper. It's just a whole lot tougher to work with here on these um, on this Teflon coated wire. As you can see, I've stripped it all the way back. Now what I'm going to do is run it through both sides of this. Um, like this, and I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink tubing in the middle right here um, as I do it. As you can see, I've, just, I've got a lot of little pieces of heat shrink tubing here, and I am just going to uh, maybe I'm going to run this all the way through, and then I'm going to come out the other side over here and fish it out. And as you can see here, I've left enough on each side to now solder the wire in, and then I'll just uh, below the heat shrink tubing, but that way I only have one wire running from here all the way down to the plug. As you can see, I got them all um, wired through the heat shrink in between them. And then uh, what I've done is I've made the ones on this end a little longer than the ones on the other end, um, just because they've got to come over to the connector that ends up mounting over on, on this side of the unit. Now all I'm going to do is put the uh, six little tabs onto them. And then once we've got that done, we can figure out what order to, to uh, put them into the, uh, the plug with. 
And I did notice after studying this a little bit, you have to turn this paper around. You kind of orient yourself with the uh, the capacitor in the picture here. So it, at that point, it lines up perfectly with the uh, HV1 to ground negative heater heater. So they'll just go straight in a row. It's also good to figure out which orientation these are going to plug into this hole. And that's easy to figure out by looking at the other side where the holes are at. And um, you can kind of tell which way to orient these on the wire then uh, before you crimp them down. One thing to watch out for, you got to be careful how much solder you get on these. And I've also noticed you have to squeeze these back parts pretty skinny here um, for these things to actually slide up in there and snap. But if you get them, if you get them right, they, um, they seem to slide right on up in there and uh, snap quite well just like that. And as you can see now I've got them all wired in and uh, jack plugged up. Now we just got to do the, uh, the LEDs. Okay on page 11 of the PC board manual it shows you this little 10-pin uh, connector here. Although what it shows you here on J3 are just the pin assignments. When you actually find it on the board it'll have header pins in here. Um, and you're going to end up using this black little jack. So, you, so you've already got the wires that you'll end up having to solder to the LEDs. Um, but this will tell you where the other end goes. And you'll just see here pin 1 and 2 is the positive and negative for the D4 heater power indicator on. And you'll match the colors of these up to the uh, colors of the jacks. Okay, the way this is going to work is it comes with five different colored wires here. And fortunately, they already have the pin soldered on that you'll snap into the little plug. And it comes with five red wires here. So what I'm going to use is, I like using red for positive. So I'm going to put the red positive on the anodes of each of these diodes. And remember, the anode is the positive longer lead. Um, so we'll end up wiring these up um, using the other ends of these wires here. And we'll end up um, using heat shrink on each one of them to kind of kind of hold it in place on the diode. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and mount the diodes in this chassis so at least they're being held by something. And they come with little, uh, little grommets here to mount them in. And the way it'll go is green, green, yellow, red, red here. Um, and then I might try to put some kind of sheathing or something like they did in one of their pictures. Um, to kind of bundle all this together. We'll figure it out as we go through here. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the green, green, yellow, red, red, and I've just kind of got them pushed into the grommets, and I've got the, the anode lead um, on each end of, uh, on the same end on all of these. Then as you can see, I cut the lead shorter here, and I've wired all the red wires to the anodes. Good news is I can actually slip the heat shrink tubing like this over the other ends as I haven't attached the other ends as I haven't attached them yet. But I'm going to go ahead and wire all the others in before I do the heat shrink gun on them. I did have to strip the end of these wires off just a little bit more than they had came from the uh, um, from the factory, but just a little bit. Okay, as you can see I've got a red and another color. It doesn't really matter what color. Somewhat independent and now it's time to slip the uh, heat shrink over these and uh, heat them all up. I'd recommend putting the heat shrink on all of them at one time, all ten of them, because as you get the gun near one it's impossible to keep from heating the others up at the same time. Alright, got them all um, dropped down on there and now I'll just use a, uh, a heat shrink gun on these. I'm actually using an SMD rework station that uh, works quite well for this as well. There we go. Okay, what I did was turn the unit up here on its side so that I could see the, the pinouts. And it's actually marked on each one of these. Um, and then if you go back to the diagram, it's easy to figure out which side is kind of positive and which is negative. And you can see all the reds are on one side and the others on the other. And so it'll just, um, it'll end up going uh, and plugging in, um, you know, along the way as you do it like this. Um, It'll actually plug in just like that. And then what I got to do is figure out what I'm going to do with these wires. I think I'm just going to put some little zip ties along the way to keep them in a bundle. And that's what we ended up doing, just zip tying them together here. 
Um, I wish I'd have had some braided um, braided sheathing I'd have put over that. But this is ready to drop down in now and plug up. And I think we're about done. Okay, now we're wired in here. Um, as you can see, everything's looking nice and neat and clean. What will be next in video two is we've got to wire up the tube sockets, which is a, a journey in and of itself and a pretty time-consuming adventure. So I'm going to save that for a video all by itself. But ultimately what you'll end up doing then is you can jumper them, say, between the ground here and a plug over here, and that's how you'll uh, determine the pinouts for your tubes. You know, a lot of tube testers, you turn knobs and whatnot. This one you'll adjust by just uh, putting the heaters to the right pins on the tube, uh, the uh, kind of negative bias to the right place, ground, and the uh, B plus to, uh, to the right places. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I am going to actually power it up at this point because I want to make sure before we go any further that this unit's actually working. Okay, up next is plugging in the fan, and I would I would recommend you consult the manual for your fan and to which wires do what. Most fans will use the red as the positive, the black as the negative, and if it had any type of speed control, the yellow one for um, speed control. In my case, I wanted to double check what's coming out of the power supply. There's a little, little plug-in down here called system fan, and if you'll notice the side towards this capacitor over here, is red um, or would be the positive side and you can see you're getting about 12 volts out there out of those two pins so I'm gonna have to rework this a little bit because to get the red and the black down like that it won't plug directly in so I'll either have to snip off this little tab right here or I'll have to rework this a little bit because um, it doesn't plug directly in based on the plug that came with my fan Okay, in my case, I chose to just use a pair of uh, long nose snippers here, and I just snipped that little tab off, and then you can plug the uh, the red onto the wire closest to this capacitor and the black on the other one, and that should be it. You do need to go into the back here. I need to go in the back of the unit, and in my case, put in the two amp fuse. Um, it'll just insert in there. And by the way, there's a a holder in here for a spare fuse if you want to put it. The unit did not come with a fuse so you um, have to get that on your own and it tells you what kind. And then you'll just plug up a normal um, IAC cord here and then okay we'll zoom back out here and I will turn it on now and hey we have super quiet fan moving and we have a power indicator on. That tells me the unit's working. Even furthermore, there is no smoke <laughs> bowling out of this unit. So um, we're going to call that a wrap for for uh, part one here. The unit is actually built. That's about two hours or a little more worth of work. It seems like it's pretty simple, but there's a good bit to it, believe it or not. Um, wiring up all these uh, connections and uh, sockets and header pins and whatnot takes a little more work than you could imagine. So. Uh, and I imagine this next part will be a similar time frame. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for part two here in the next day or so. We're going to have this thing running uh, before the end of the week and be testing tubes with it.